So, um, so hello everyone. Uh, thanks for being here today. I'm uh, very excited to be with you, showing the results of a good year of work for our team. And uh, this work was funded by NSERC, was aimed at understanding how scientific platform contribute to research success. First, I'd like to uh, give the scientific platform definition according to the Canadian Network of Scientific Platform, CNSP. So, uh, scientific platform are centralized laboratories and shared laboratories that have specialized instrumentation and or specialized services um, with dedicated expert and platform scientists. They are open to the community uh, for the members of the institution, for external researchers, sometimes for industry as well. They have to be discrete units in dedicated space with uh, dedicated e equipment. So now let me tell you a story of how this project came to be. For those uh, who know me, I love stories. So um, uh, CNSP, we knew SPs were important for research success but uh, we believe this contribution needed to be demonstrated more scientifically but to demonstrate this impact you need to uh, measure it via the development of, of impact measurement tools also we needed to understand the challenge faced uh, by sps and it identify them to be able to provide help in solving those challenges um, with data extracted from CFI uh, Navigator, uh, we can identify over 730 SPs, uh, including NRC facilities. They represent about $20 billion investment for the last 20 years from federal, provincial, and partners funding. Uh, with over 2,500 scientists, they serve more than 40,000 laboratories across Canada. And like them, the CNSP is dedicated to promote SPs in Canada and globally. If you look at the Canadian map here, SPs are distributed across the country, roughly proportional to the population level. All provinces and even one territory are represented as of October 2020. Keep in mind, not all SPs are there, only the ones listed on the navigator. There's a lot more. Uh, what is tracking about SPs is that they are multidisciplinary group, as shown in this graph. The different colors represent the different provinces, and on the x-axis, it gives you a count of uh, sectors of application offered by each SP, and y-axis uh, being the number of scientific platforms. Importantly, importantly, oops, sorry about that. 36% uh, of SPs show more than five sectors of application, again showing the multidisciplinarity. Now, to understand uh, how uh, platforms can have an impact on research success, um, we need to understand what research success is. Here, we will look uh, at what it is for a principal investigator in Canada which is what we might be the most familiar with for now. Uh, note that the factors measured, sometimes via indicators, but also with qualitative assessment, are directly linked to the mission of the researcher. So if you look at this graph, you can see three areas of impact. One um, is research dissemination. Uh, for example, publications, uh, uh, attendance to conference, book chapters, even patents. Second is uh, researcher recognition, um, which can be uh, grants awarded, invitations from peers, uh, uh, participating in editorial boards, but also uh, equity, diversity, and inclusion factors as well. And third um, and final, the knowledge transmission um, uh, factors um, are, for example, the number of students trained, impact of the research uh, qualitatively, what other things have in, had impact for this research. It can also be codes of practice. Note that the relative importance of these factors might depend on the research area, the program, or the funding agency's priorities. 
So there are other, other success factors out there. Um, and we need to understand which one can be specific for SPs because the missions of SPs are different than the ones from researchers. So discovering other factors of research success, um, in order to do that, we needed to go through the literature. And uh, we did a lot of work and, and tried to put all those uh, interesting factors into a survey to understand what people consider being important for them. Also, to make sure we didn't forget anything, uh, we used semi-structured interviews that are, in fact, guided interviews where we wanted people to um, explain what they considered uh, success factors. And uh, this is what we did. From there, um, once we know what factors are important for people, we need to understand how to measure them. So this is where indicators come to play. We need to know what's available and how to use them. And then from there also introduce a measurement framework to help us work with all those uh, numbers. For the survey, there was uh, several objectives. The first one was, as I said, understand what people consider to be important research factors, uh, research success factors. So we asked PIs using SPs or not using SPs, other users, administrators, SP directors, SP scientists. And from there to the SP users, we wanted to understand what drives their usage decision and understand their level of satisfaction. And finally, the, for the people working in the scientific platforms, we wanted to understand their criteria of satisfaction, dissatisfaction in their work. So as expectancy, there are classical evaluation factors, uh, results, um, um, on um, top success factors showed that publications, funding, and student success uh, were among the top ones. Um, a quick note, we evaluated 63 success factors out there. So um, the ones related to um, publication and conferences uh, were pretty high. Uh, of course, the ones from funding, which was the highest, uh, especially in the amount of money. And also, um, very important, the success of the students supervised. Most of those factors were over 70% uh, approval rate. Um, on a quick note as well, uh, the scale is between not important at all in uh, dark brown to extremely important in the dark green. Um, also, some other factors had mitigated importance for success. Uh, the ones that are social, economical, and environmental, whether indirect or direct, didn't rate, rate around 60% uh, importance. Yeah. General public visibility, competition, and relationship with industry were rated quite low uh, for research uh, success factors. Um, so general public visibility uh, is usually quite low. It could be TV documentary or radio interview. Competition was not considered a very important factor for research success. And the relationship with industry was, was not that strong as well. Finally, five factors related to SPs are cited among the top 10. So remember, 63 factors evaluated there. So among the top 10, we have five factors really related to SPs, as you can see highlighted in yellow. And four of them are even over, over, over the research grants awarded in dollar amount, which, is, which was kind of surprising for us. So in other words, people and, and scientific platforms are more important than money at first. <laughs> So with that information in mind, we wanted to understand what, why people make the decision to use scientific platform. So people expertise, quality of instruments and data are important for the decision of usage. As you can see here, um, two factors uh, about um, people expertise were highlighted, five about instrument uh, quality and two about uh, data quality. And all of them were pretty high. Now, for user satisfaction, we wanted to understand uh, how satisfied were people about their platforms. 
And we were very happy to see that the levels of uh, appreciation were pretty high. And if you look into the top one, which is prof professionalism, <laughs> Uh, this is the highest one and it kind of covers all the different all the other uh, aspects of of um, of satisfaction which is a uh, very very good very good news so to summarize the results from uh, the survey um, uh, publication funding and student success are top success factors this is not surprising since there are classical success factors as described earlier in the presentation and to the public visibility competition and relationship with industry uh, this can, the fact that it's kind of mitigated uh, can be an issue considering the mistrust of uh, general public with science for example we can name uh, climatoseptic for example and relationship with the industry is a top factor for granting agency and, um, and for Canadian research policy. So here are the gaps that needs to be addressed potentially. The third factor is um, um, socio-economical and environment relatively mitigated. Uh, those factors should be considered more important, but are difficult to evaluate and maybe not an easy sell for people on, uh, in science still could be a, a way to show the connection with the real world and increase visibility of SP to the policymakers as well. So this is maybe one thing to work on. Still, <clears throat> I'd like to re remind you that, that five factors related to SP as I cited among the top 10 of important factors. People expertise, quality of instrument data are really key to usage decision and the level of satisfaction of people to their platform is really high. Now that we get a sense of what is important within the success factors we knew about, uh, here are, are there others that we need to discover? This is why we used uh, interviews as a tool to understand SP's dynamic in the research ecosystem. And indeed, we discovered that SP strengths include research acceleration, budget optimization, collaboration, and other factors like, for example, we discovered with the interviews that uh, uh, access to SPs accelerate research, especially for early career researchers. This is the best way to optimize tight budgets. I still don't know how to measure that, but this is what I, we gathered. Collaboration is key for SP scientists are here to help and not to compete. So we need to measure collaboration in a way. And lots of platforms, especially ones that are more related to engineering, chemistry, material science, it's very important for them to help the economy by supporting spin-off companies. Also, also, some challenges were identified as well, especially in funding options, recognition and impact. Direct funding for renewal of equipment like workhorses or for operation is not available. Many SP scientists express dissatisfactions for their status, recognition, and job stability. And the measure of SP impact is difficult, but essential to understand their full contribution to research success. So now, with all that, uh, we tried to understand what was um, the role and interaction of scientific platform in research ecosystem. So this complex systems overview is a way for you to understand that the dynamics and interactions are complex. Don't worry, I'm not gonna go all, through all the, the figure. But the next step of our study, uh, try to understand one small aspect of this ecosystem. Is there a correlation between usage of SP and research.com? This research.com being publications and grant success. So what we discovered that PI users have a higher citation level than non-users. So for that, we used um, bibliometric information and what's called the relative citation index, which is the number of citations per year normalized for the research area. This is very important because in this uh, case study, um, uh, researchers from all different research areas were compiled together and depending on the research area the level of the normal level of citation can be very different so that's why you you need to use a normalized 
um, citation index per research area. So as you can see here, users in blue have a higher citation, relative citation index than non-users. Some years show a significant difference between the two groups for the years 2011, 2014, 15, and 18. Moreover, we did a study also on funding for the three council uh, funding, and PI users tend to have better funding. So as shown in this graph, um, the blue, the users in blue show a higher level of funding than the non-users in green. So this is the average funding per researcher per year. For the years 2008, 9, uh, 2014 to 2017, there's a significant difference, significant difference between the groups. Now, we have a few indicators that we uncovered. We um, highlighted the correlation between usage of scientific platform um, with uh, a better citation level and better funding. Now, is there other indicators that can show um, uh, the impact of the scientific platforms? But before using indicators of the SP ecosystem, you need to understand their strengths and limitations. So the measures, whether it's indicators or tools chosen for the impact evaluation must be examined through the prism of the mission and objectives of the platform. So the strengths of doing that, you can get an evaluation of SP over time. You can highlight new aspects of the impact. And as you can see, the impact that we want to measure for SPs might be slightly or even, or even very different than the ones we measure for a PI, for example. And uh, the framework that you can uh, decide to use needs to be according to the SP mission. And also having a framework helps to harmonize the communication, whether you talk to the funding agency, to the government, between universities, internationally, etc. But there are limitations, precautions, I would say. The, the risk of using numbers to measure impact is that those numbers become more important than the story behind. So indicators are really tools, not the message. Indicators must fit with the mission. You won't use the same indicators depending on the platform, etc. Indicators are part, are part of the story. And also you need to be careful of the life cycle stages of the platform, whether it's at the very beginning or at the very end of its life cycle. The, the meaning of the indicators will be completely different. Finally, how do you measure impact? How do you choose your indicators? So after this work we've done, we've, we ended up with dozens of indicators possible that might have an interest high or low. So here I'm showing just two, um, I'm just showing you a simple example of indicators that can be used for personal or staff in the SP. Here, um, you can, for example, uh, uh, evaluate three different um, metrics for personal. The, <clears throat> sorry, <clears throat> the colors in the circles show how easy or difficult it is to measure this indicator. Green being easy, orange mildly difficult, and you're lucky I didn't show you some of the red ones. Uh, so for the first one, for example, one easy to get is a number of personal. So the people running the infrastructure are part of the, infra the infrastructure, and that's we don't need, we need not to forget that. Without expert operators, the infrastructure cannot be used to its full potential. The level of expertise is very important as well. Whether the people have PhDs, MSCs, uh, masters, etc., is very important as well. And one that is never measured is a unique expertise or personal. It's never measured, it's never listed. It's really, uh, if you know the people that you know what they can do. For example, uh, someone can have very specific computer skills, programming skills, involvement in professional society or larger network. So the list of certification received or course completed can be uh, types of indicator you can gather for your team. So if I summarize the study, some highlights now. 
after all the work we've done. I confirm SPs are important to research success. <laughs> SPs impact measurements need specific indicators. SP impact can be improved through advocacy, better funding and recognition. SPs should use assessment tools to measure and promote the impact because this is really a big gap that we had is that it's very difficult to measure our impact and now we can come up with some indicators. Finally, I'd like to present you the research team very quickly. So Claire Brown, which was a director for that uh, study, Jerome Wadispo was co-director and helped us uh, with uh, analyzing of the data and very good expert advice, myself. Uh, Kim Davis, I did lots of the survey data analysis and designed the survey. Louis Renaud Desjardins for the bibliometric work with uh, the big help of Vincent Larivière and his lab and his database for bibliometric analysis. Also, I'd like to thank uh, NSERC for the funding, uh, the CNSP, because we had access to the huge network of the CNSP. And finally, the different uh, participating institutions, especially um, all, uh, all the individual participants that gave time, advice, and passion to this study. For confidentiality reason, I cannot share all the names, but they will recognize themselves. Um, and since I have a bit of time, this what we hope to do in the future is publish the data, especially, hopefully extend to other groups, and hopefully going national and global with this kind of study. And I thank you all for your patience. Okay, thank you very much, Charles. Um, so we'll open up uh, for question and answer now. And we had one question just for clarification of terms was, uh, what do you mean by a mitigated factor of success? Um, yeah, I try to find a more proper word for that, but uh, some factors uh, were really uh, a mix of feelings depending on the people. Some people found them very important, some not very important. So it was a mixed uh, evaluation by the people that were uh, surveyed. Would you have an example of one of those factors that would be? Yeah. Um, yes, maybe I can just hold on. I'm gonna go back to the picture. That would be easier. So let me share my screen again, maybe. I don't know where <laughs> Zoom is hidden behind my screen. So I'm gonna find it in a second. Okay, so for example, this is, um, um, the type of the typical type of uh, factors that got mixed uh, reception. Um, so if you look at uh, direct or indirect uh, economic impact or environmental impact, you could see that. Um, so don't forget the, the the grade is from not important at all to extremely important. Most people um, uh, found it still important, but it was kind of mixed um, feeling. If you compare, for example, with um, uh, for example, the previous one, if you look at that slide, for example, um, you can see that the, the balance between very important and not important is much more to the green by comparison with that one. So that's why I like to say mitigated. It didn't raise as much passion <laughs> than <Yeah>. the others. <laughs> I Thanks. hope that helps. Yes, I think so. Um, so we have another question. Um, do you have an idea how to advertise what message we should send and what channel or social media? So this is in the context of how do we advocate the impact of the scientific platform? Um, well, CNSP is trying to do that with different channels. Um, what we've been doing in the past is, it always depends on uh, the type of information you want to share. So if you have data like the one we have right now, we try to make sure um, people in funding agencies, in higher levels, um, at the universities or institutions you're at are aware that this work is being done. 
uh, if those data concern your institution, if you manage to get this kind of data, uh, it's very important to show this is what um, the international trend is going. For example, the OECD is working a lot on infrastructures and in frameworks for evaluation of infrastructures. Uh, there's a, a big, big push internationally to really measuring this impact from a number of reasons, but I think one of the most important ones is we uh, manage uh, in Canada $20 billion of funding directly or indirectly. So government wants to know what this money put this, that this money has been put to good use. And also to optimize this, uh, this infrastructure. So in our case, we focus mostly in scientific platform. We didn't really address a major science initiative. But uh, the thing is that I've discovered by doing all this research or this reading is that for medium range scientific platform like we mostly are, um, the usual impact factors uh, are not necessarily suitable. So to, in order to promote, we need to really go get what's strong in our mission and in our uh, institution. So don't be, don't be shy to show your upper management and, and funding agencies, and, and we can help to advocate also. Yeah, one thing I'll add there is that um, the couple of examples that Laurent showed at the end um, with the color coded indicators of how easy things are to measure. The, we did that work as part of the um, socioeconomic impact group of global bioimaging and we're planning to publish that um, as a international recommendation of of how to measure. Um, performance and uh, socioeconomic impact. It's going to be in the context specifically of light microscopy imaging facilities, but I think that the, the tool would certainly be useful for others. So we're hoping to publish that as a international recommendation. So we're hoping that will bring some um, attention and awareness to the issue as well. So I'm maybe gonna call on a couple of people if they wanna ask their question to maybe uh, give us a bit more interaction here. So. Uh, Elka. And Claire, could I make sure you don't miss yeah. Elka? Because you skipped over yes. her the first time there. Yeah. We're just keeping an eye on each other. That's why I'm butting Thank in you. there, folks. <laughs> I was just going to, yeah. So if Elka Kustershuk, could do you want to um, ask your question? Yeah, there was one comment I wanted to make uh, about the, the success indicators. Um, Laurence, you said that for the personnel, one that's easy to measure is the level of expertise. And as an example, you said you could um, look at the university degrees. And I would argue that the university degree, de degrees don't necessarily mean something about the, the usefulness for the person in that scientific platform, um, because for example, I mean, I have a PhD, but in my PhD work, I've never worked with microscopes and now I'm responsible for a bunch of microscopes. So that wouldn't really be an indicator that is relevant there. Another thing I wanted to actually ask is how did you identify um, which PIs were users of SPs? Was that self-reported? Uh, no, it's a, it's a case study from one full university that reported that for individual okay. PIs. And and then I was wondering if um, if it isn't a, a self fulfilling thing where you say the the SP users are the ones that have better funding, uh, is it that they can only use the SPs because they have better funding? Potentially, there's a lot of things that uh, limit to the interpretation. Definitely, um, it's very. I mean, the analysis we did is very um, simple. Um, and I've, I'm in touch with someone that is uh, in economics and math to really understand how we can use those data in a better way. But still, I think it's an interesting, uh, an interesting view. I'm not saying it's generalized. It's in this particular institution. And yeah, it was reported by the institution, not by the people. We had also... We and, for the, and for the level of, uh, of um, for the degrees that people have, yeah, I couldn't agree more that the degree doesn't make the talent necessary, <laughs> but it's still part of, the, of an easy way to, to measure um, the, the level of expertise or the potential or the potentiality of a core. We had also talked about whether um, 
researchers who don't use scientific platforms perhaps don't need to have as much grant funding. So if somebody is in more of a theory lab or, you know, a math group, they may have smaller grants just because they don't have consumables or they're not housing animals and so on. So, so it could be that they're not using platforms because they, they don't need them, you know, <laughs> and their grants are less because they don't have to pay for them. Um, so Anna Giazzi, would you like to ask your question? Otherwise, I'm happy to ask it for you. Uh, hi. Um, sorry, let me just go back here. Uh, what one of them, Elke, already touched on it about the 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 funding, right? Like, so PIs that have more funding, are they in a better position to use the SPs or? more publications lead to more funding. So it's just a thought and I wanted to see your take on it, but you already um, mentioned that. Um, then I, I was just like, we, we talked in other meetings about publications and ways we could track it to measure uh, the impact of scientific platforms. So would you consider that one of the best ways of uh, advertise our impact? Uh, personally, I think it's super important because I think what, uh, even if the publication is not a direct objective of a platform, the contribution to others' publications should be monitored. Okay, we didn't go into there into that um, specifically during the study because we realized for now we don't have access to that unless you take all the articles one on one and check if the platform was used. So this is really a big. Uh, uh, not issue, I think it will be a big way to show the impact uh, through contribution to other publications and more and more scientific platforms across the country and worldwide are implementing automated system where uh, when a researcher gets a publication, the platform can evaluate if they contributed. Uh, there's um, mandatory acknowledgements when the people use the platform, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So um, it's, it's, I agree with you, and it would be strong to, and very, very important to do that. Uh, unfortunately, if you go, if you want to go look at historical data or, or small institution, for now, it's not a general practice yet. And it's a lot of work and very complicated to, to do that work. So, just, but, I just want to rip, um point to one resource I'll put in the chat there. The, the ABRF, the Association of Biomolecular Resource Facilities, has a website which is called the Core Marketplace. And I only learned recently that if you register for their Core Marketplace, they um, are in contact with another group and assign you what's called a research resource ID. And uh, I guess these are, are catching on a bit more. You can also, they're also used for like custom antibodies or custom cell lines or animals that you might generate. And uh, one of the things where we've been talking about pushing with the CNSP is, is getting people to acknowledge that research resource ID number in a paper. And then, then you could, you know, text mine for that ID or use that ID on PubMed to find um, papers that used your facility. And uh, the other thing I would advocate for anybody who's reviewing papers, uh, I've, I've gotten into the habit now, if there's no acknowledgement of, of putting that in my reviewer, comments did you use a scientific platform um, for this work and if so you should acknowledge them and I've had quite a bit of success I think oftentimes people just uh, are overwhelmed with the whole task of publishing and and just forget so yeah that's great thanks Claire that's a uh, good suggestions so I think um uh Vindu Sharma would you like to ask your question? Hi, yes, uh, great uh, study and great presentation. Um, I think it's it's a great way to start this conversation again. I think, in, especially in the context of Canadians uh, SPs, there isn't too much information available in terms of what are the key performance indicators. And I think uh, Elk and uh, Anna, like a couple of these things are already covered. But uh, one question that I had specifically for uh, for for the for the study was about the user and non-user group. Like one of the graphs, I remember you showed that uh, mm -hmm. there is um, the, the user group that are using the SP and the non-user group that is not, and they're within the same research area. I, my question is, are they from the same institute, and do we know uh, if they have access? Uh, 
I mean, do they have equal access to the same scientific platforms? And what yeah. might, what, what is potentially the reason uh, that they're not using? Because there are like a lot of times there are very specialized uh, technologies that can only be accessed. I mean, it's it's difficult to host uh, NMR or some of those kind of uh, you know uh, infrastructure in within mm -hmm. a lab. So yeah, uh, if you can answer that. Yeah. So for this case study, it was a, a full faculty of science uh, of a university. So it was for access to the same, um, uh, the same scientific platforms and uh, from the uh, a pool of, uh, of researchers that uh, were physically relatively close to each other. Um, I mean, it's a faculty, right? So it's not necessarily uh, 10 meters away. So we, but we don't have some of the information. We don't know why they didn't use a platform if they didn't use it. So as Claire mentioned earlier, maybe they just don't need it. So some of the, level of uh, uh, interpretation of this data um, is, is we need to be careful about what we do with that. Um, but overall, um, there was a clear, um, they had access to the same platforms. There were 26 platforms and there were, I don't know, 120 researchers. And this is, this is how we got the data. Um, I, I agree with you. We, we need to be sure that normally it's uh, the same faculty and it's the same uh, uh, big building. So, Great. We try to reduce the number of uh, variables as much as possible. Yep, great. Thank you. And actually, one more question about uh, sort of like, you know, again, looking from your, uh, uh, your, your perspective, did you notice that uh, stronger like management or administrative support to these uh, scientific platforms had any role in the potential uh, like the success of the scientific platforms? Because I've noticed like a lot of places uh, it, they have just the technologists that they're, that they're managing before with regards to the scientific aspect, but also uh, the financial and other sort of things. But there are other platforms where there is more of a structured, uh, like, you know, there's, an, there's a leadership level sort of uh, involvement as well. And there is more uh, mission value, those kind of things. Uh, mm -hmm. and, yeah. So have, was there anything uh, like any attention paid to that? Uh, my experience, uh, we didn't measure anything specifically toward that. Um, and this is why I draw that nice little <laughs> uh, interaction system and, uh, and uh, ecosystem of scientific platform. Definitely my experience with uh, lots and lots of institution is that when the leadership of the institution pushes for the respect and building strong scientific platforms, um, you have the level of satisfaction of both uh, PIs, users, and even people working on the platform there. Uh, it's a support uh, because the administration can help in supporting, doing the billing, doing lots of things like that. But they can also enforce the fact that the instruments need to be shared and they can enforce the fact that you need to have um, um, competent uh, scientists on the platform, etc., etc. So my experience is that when you have that kind of leadership and the, the this kind of... Uh, a financial commitment and administrative commitment uh, it's really it's really making a difference um, in terms of having a well established a set of platform set of platforms i'm not saying that when it's not there the platform are not good right you can have ex ex exceptional platform uh, for many re many reasons but having the leadership really helps <laughs> okay so we'll take one last question from kanuk am i close <laughs> I apologize if I mispronounced your name. Kind of close enough. Oh. Um, so I was just wondering, in the very beginning, when you were presenting um, some of the, the things that came up as being the strongest success indicators, um, being publications, funding, and student success, the funding that was being referred to, is that funding directly to the scientific platforms or to people that use them? Because, I mean, a platform in general doesn't really have other than whatever yeah. funds they get to get set up after that. You don't really have a chance yeah. to get any more funding these days. I mean, at one point we could, but now nobody yeah. can. So basically you have to take it in the perspective of someone taking a survey and the mm -hmm. question we ask, is this factor important? Okay, I see. So it wasn't you? so much dry. Okay, I understand. So as a person, yes, funding is important. Doesn't mean that my platform will get funded directly. 
See what I mean? So this is really how you those factors okay, were, wasn't were established. That's something we can survey and say this platform got lots of funding. They're doing well because it's more that people would see that as something you could ask about. Yeah, it was more a general question okay. about research right. success, not necessarily directed uh, for platforms. It's like, do you think funding is important? Of course. <laughs> you know, <laughs> we were expecting this one as a be as being our positive control, <laughs> kind of. Okay. Thanks. Oh, I that was <laughs> no problem. Thanks. But all very interesting. It's good. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So uh, thank you, Laurence, for the presentation. And uh, <laughs> we'd, I'm sure we'd be happy to take any more questions if anybody has any they want to send, uh, put in the chat or send by email, we can answer uh, offline. And we are working on the more in-depth uh, publication as well. And as Laurence mentioned as well, we're looking for more funding so we can continue this work. <laughs>